Hello and welcome, I'm the Rambling Director and today we're going to be talking about Tim Burton's Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Now, when this film came out, I know a lot of people really hated it. I too prefer Gene Wilder's beleaguered, kind of worn down, world weary Wonka over the Michael Jackson style performance that Johnny Depp went for, but I also think that as I've grown older and developed a lot of anxiety and social anxiety particularly, uh, I've realized that Johnny Depp's performance is far more accurate to what a person would be like after years of isolation. There's also some criticisms I could name about it off the bat that nobody else really seems to mention. They're just things that bother me personally. There's a flashback where we see Willy Wonka in his small candy store that he was running on the street. And in that flashback, although we don't see his face, we see him with the short haircut. He is wearing a bright, colorful top hat and his coat is a bright plum red and he's wearing these red like candy cane red gloves and I have always thought that that was a much much better costume design for Wonka than the outfit we end up seeing later. I almost feel like the more eccentric he became, the more bright and colorful his costume should become. Tim Burton went with a more muted color scheme for Wonka once you get into the factory with a darker plum red, and uh, in addition to the black top hat he wore in the book, he is wearing mostly black and gray. Little things like that aside, there is a lot about this movie that I love, some of which is things that other people hate. Let's start right into it. I think this is a great modern update. Although the original feels timeless, in some ways, like the sets and the costumes, in other ways it feels extremely dated. The Tim Burton film, although a modern update, it retains a lot of that timelessness. Yes, there's video games, but the first person shooter that Mike is playing, how is he playing it? on an old joystick. The Germany of this film looks really fantastically over the top and whimsical. The different points you see in America look like something out of the neighborhood in Edward Scissorhands. There's something that looks old about them, but also modern. You could literally say this took place in any time period within the last 50 years and it would more or less work. The chocolate bar designs are beautiful. I think the candy bar being kept in that foil with the paper over it. it takes me right back to when I was a kid and Hershey bars were still wrapped with foil and paper there was none of that ridiculous plasticky cellophane stuff I hate that stuff it, it, there was something so classy and elegant about those old foil wrapped candy bars wasn't there it's really cool that all the candy bars look the same in this production yeah they're all different flavors but they're all perfectly little rectangular bars just like Hershey bars. Makes me think of like the Hershey's cookies and cream, the almonds and dark chocolate and stuff like that. Uh, you, you know, they're all the same size and shape, they're just different color wrappers. I think that's pretty clever. Because all of the candy bars look the same, when Wonka announces that just somewhere in one of the Wonka bars there's a golden ticket, we see all flavors selling out. That was something that the original, I think, could have actually implemented because things like the scrum de is a different shape and size that clearly wouldn't be in a regular Wonka bar. Freddie Highmore I think is perfect as Charlie. Let's get to that criticism. I know a lot of people say he's too perfect. A lot of people make fun of the candy bar scene where he splits up the candy bar and gives it to his family and they go oh he's it's just like Jesus at the Last Supper because Charlie's so unbelievably perfect. If you look at the, the Tim Burton movie and you say Charlie's too perfect that kid doesn't exist or if you look at the old 70s version and you say you know kids like that they just don't exist they're not that you know that bratty and whiny if you say either of those things you've just convinced me that you've never met a child <laughs> okay because they're all different types of kids I was one of those kids that lived with a bit of hardship and developed a sense of that that things you know that life is kind of hard and we have to share and we have to be you know we have to love one another and we have to share the blessings that we, we give and again that scene is in the book the only difference is in the book the family didn't take the candy bar they wouldn't accept it from him and I guess Charlie does that in the 70s version but it's real quick and it ends really fast and Charlie doesn't really have any kind of argument with them to try to get them to take it I also love that every time 
Charlie takes a bite of the candy in this version, even in the TV room at the end, he takes just a little nibble because he's so conditioned to enjoying every little nibble of that candy bar. That's good visual storytelling. They don't draw attention to it. It's not pretentious. It's just a little detail that makes it a little bit better. I have heard some people say that the outside world is so colorful and Tim Burton-y that when you get into the factory, it's kind of undercut by that. I disagree. Besides the house that the buckets live in being kind of curvy, the rest of the world, although it's bright and colorful, it still looks like our world just kind of spread out through different time periods. There's also some really cool stuff that I've heard people complain about for obviously asinine reasons. When they say it's uh, the Prince Pondicherry thing is racist, I'm really just beyond confused as to how. I mean, if, uh, if a white guy was playing him, maybe I could see that. That little story was world building straight from the book. And it was nice to see it put here because it's a great visual way of showing Wonka's uh, bizarre okayness with the weirdness of the world. That he just goes out and builds this guy a palace made of chocolate. No questions asked. Some other things that were nice to see from the book was the squirrels. So a lot of you, if you haven't read the book before, you might not know, but in the 70s version with Gene Wilder, they replaced the squirrels in the nut sorting room with golden egg laying geese. This of course is where Veruca Salt meets her end. However, in the Burton version, we see squirrels just like in the book and he was so dedicated to not using CGI that although a little CGI is used for a couple of the squirrels movements, there's almost no CGI squirrels. Actually, the special effect, strangely enough, is on Veruca herself. There was a stunt woman wearing a mask, and they digitally put the girl playing Veruca Salt, just popped her face on there. I just think that that's really something to be appreciated, especially because I see a lot of people who complain and moan that every time CGI is in a movie, it's ruining the art of filmmaking. And yet when somebody does something really extreme, like using highly trained rescue squirrels for a movie like this, it doesn't get any attention. Now I can take or leave the stuff with Wonka's dad at the end of the movie. I think it actually would have been nicer if Wonka at the end would have flown into the bucket's house and invited them all to come because he was touched by the spirit of their family and how they all loved each other. And maybe in that moment, he learned the true meaning of family. Yeah, it would have been cheesy, but the end we got was cheesy and it would have saved us like seven minutes. So I do have my complaints with this movie, but there's just far too much good in it for me not to really enjoy it. Even the flashback showing the origin of Willy Wonka I actually really like, and anything with Christopher Lee in it, I'm gonna watch because Christopher Lee is freaking awesome. I think the kids are perfectly cast and their adult counterparts are perfectly cast. The Bucket family is more rounded this time, perhaps because this time they included the dad. Yeah, what was up with that, filmmakers? Oh, Mel Stewart, why did you leave Charlie's dad out of it? I guess it was to add more tragedy or whatever, but the wholeness of the family unit was such a big part of the story of Charlie Bucket. The grandparents are also far more fleshed out, more even so than in the book. Grandpa George is a curmudgeon with a heart of gold. Grandpa Joe, although he still has some insufferable moments, is a far better character than he was in the 70s version. Uh, Josephine's a little short on character, but Grandma Georgina breaks my heart. My grandfather had dementia, and when she has those little moments of lucidity, yeah, it might just be used as a cheap little gimmick, but to somebody who's lived through a grandparent suffering with that, those moments of lucidity, they stick with you. And something nice that wasn't in the 70s version is Grandpa Joe worked for Willy Wonka. And because he did, he was one of the people laid off. And when we see it in flashback, it is heartbreaking because he clearly loved working for Willy Wonka and he loved working in that factory. It ties it back into the story. It's actually a good reason why Grandpa Joe should be the one going with Charlie to the chocolate factory. Unlike the 70s version where his mom is working herself to the bone and he's like, what? screw you, mom, I want to take the invalid. The 70s movie is one of my favorite movies of all time. 
I'm saying that because some of you listening to the way I'm talking right now may be like, man, you got a funny way of showing it. We look at the things we love with an objective lens, we almost always can find something wrong with them. And the 70s version is a film that is very much drenched in the time it was made. It has a lot of cliches and stuff that made its way in because of the time period that it was framed in. This movie does too, but I also think that it's equally as good as the original. There's just, uh, there's just not as much charm to it in the ways that the original had, which made the original very accessible and this version a little more alienating. It is far more realistic and relatable to a lot of us when we see Willy Wonka really struggling to relate to human beings. There's also a lot of criticisms of this movie that I just quite frankly don't understand. When the kids are walking into the factory and ask, wouldn't you like to know our names? Wonka says, I can't imagine how it wouldn't matter. Now I've heard many critics go, uh, because you're choosing one of them to run your factory, of course it matters. But they clearly didn't listen to the dialogue. It's a double negative. I can't imagine how it wouldn't matter. He's saying, obviously I want to know your name, but let's be honest here, Wonka, being who he is, knows all of their names. There's also something really funny about Mike TV being one of those kids who is so smart, too smart for his own good, that he is able to, to figure out the algorithm. Apparently there's an algorithm to randomly giving out chocolate bars because this was all totally planned. Hashtag change my mind. And <laughs> that's just, I'm, I'm going to lay it all out there. Yeah, both movies. I think Wonka planned all this. <laughs> but there are kids like that who do those sort of things, you know, not because they love chocolate. Mike TV says he hates chocolate and candy's a waste of time. He does it simply because he can. I think a lot of people in internet culture could certainly stand to learn a little bit from that. There is overall just such a nice element of visual storytelling to this film that just doesn't exist in the other film. All of these flashbacks, I know some people say they went on too long. I would rather be seeing these things than being told about them. In a play, I don't mind. That's the medium. But in a film, I should be seeing these things. You can tell me about them, but I should be seeing them at the same time. The intensity with which they followed the book, I thought was wonderful. The Oompa Loompas all being played by the incredibly talented Deep Roy. It, it's amazing to me that, you know, there's now a couple of little people who have gotten world famous, you know, but for whatever reason, he kind of slips over the, under the radar. And yet just, just with purely his face and with his eyes, he can tell you a whole story. Almost like a silent movie actor. I am aware the entire reason they cast the same actor for all of the Oompa Loompas is just so they could do the joke with Doris. If you don't know what I'm talking about, watch the movie again. You'll get a kick out of it. So that's all. I really think that this movie is just terribly underrated. I've heard a lot of people say it's overrated, but you know what? To quote James Rolfe when he was talking about the Avatar movie, yeah, it would be overrated if anybody was saying anything good about it. But I never hear anybody say anything good about this film. Literally every time I talk to anybody about Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, it's a complaint. People are just so hateful towards this movie. It is a very good movie. Structurally, it's, it is it is a good movie. And I think in terms of being timeless, in 50 years from now, this movie will be far more timeless than the original. That doesn't mean I like it better. I still like the original better. But I think an entirely objective person has to look at these films and say, they're pretty close to equal. And maybe the Tim Burton one is a little bit better. So with that, I give Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, from my personal point of view, an A. Yeah, it's got its flaws, but all of its flaws are really, the more I think about it, just down to my personal taste and yours for that matter. I've never heard really any objective criticism of this film, it's always been, well, I don't like the way he played Wonka. I don't like the fact that Charlie wasn't a brat in this version. But all of those things are down to your own subjective taste. And I think if you look at it with a, an objective set of glasses, that you will see this film is very good. 
and take it for what it is, not for what you want it to be. Oh, before I forget, also, Wonka's cane is filled with nerds. Did anybody else ever notice that? That's all, everybody. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.